Okay guys, so today I'll be showing you how to make a program using load encoders. Load encoders are very useful if you don't have a gyro sensor or you don't want to take risk getting gyro drift in the middle of your epilogue run. Well, anyway, here's the program. It's very simple. And I'm going to walk you through what each block does and how to make it and how it all works. That is not what I meant to do. To press this. Okay. So... We have our start block and now let's start building our program. I'll just show you where each piece goes and then I'll explain what everything does. Uh, my first motor is connected on B and my second is connected on C. Note that all both of these motors are large motors. This will go on the default measure degrees, and this too will go on default measure degrees, and see. Okay, now as we start bringing the math in, we will now go for math blocks, two of them. First one will be set on subtract, and the second one will be set on multiply. Now all we have to do is plug B into B, and C into A, and I'll drag this down to make it look cleaner, and Plug the result into A, and B is a controversial value because it's going to be different for each and every one of us. Uh, 1.5 works for me best because it's uh, basically the larger the number, the more steep the corrections the robot will make, and the smaller, the more curvy, uh, less defined corrections. But 1.5 works for me because of how my robot's built, and uh, yeah. And now we have the final block, which is the steering wheel block. My computer is lagging, there's a video recorder. Keep this one on and plug this into the steering. And ch uh, I'm going to set the power to negative 25 because my motors are inverted, so forward makes me go backward. Okay, what happened here? There we go. That's the program. And now let me walk you through what each and everything does. Of course, the start block starts the program. Then we have these two motor rotation blocks which we got from the yellow tab. These basically restart both of the like reset both of the degree values on both of the large motors to zero for very obvious reasons, which I hope you understand. Basically, it's important to start this program on both of the motors at zero. Otherwise, we're gonna go into a circle or we're gonna just like keep turning around in one place because the robot's gonna try to think, oh, we're already like 15 to like one motor has 15 degrees and the other has five degrees when you start and without these blocks the program is going to it's not going to work very well and like i said it's going to keep going in a circle so after we reset both of them we enter a loop and i have this loop set on unlimited for tutorial purposes if you were going to add this to your own program you'd probably add motor rotations because maybe you like might want to like get to a mission that's like four rotations forward I'd set on four rotations or or timer, but uh, rotations are more consistent. We have two more of those same blocks, but this time we set on the default measure degrees on both of them, B and C. Okay, so B plugs into B in the math block. Now you might be wondering why am I subtracting both of these motor values and then multiplying them? Well, we're subtracting them because we want to find the difference between the two of the motor degree values. So, back to my example, motor B is at 15 degrees, and motor C is at 5 degrees. It's going to find the difference. It's going to find 5 minus B, which was 15, negative 10, and it's going to multiply negative 10 by 1.5. And then, if you look at this, negative 10 times 1.5 is a negative 1 number. So the robot is going to know that I have to go, oh, not a good example, I'm going to have to go left. Or vice versa, if C is overpowering B, it's gonna go right because we're gonna we're gonna get a positive value because uh, C minus B, it's gonna you know what I mean, and then it's gonna go right, and it's gonna keep doing that unlimited amount of times until of course you end the program. Or if your end case is solved, what happened here? This is never happening. Okay, regardless, I think the program will still work. Yeah, so that's basically what the program does. I have an animation that just ran um, while I was explaining this. Hopefully it better understand, uh, better helps your understanding. 
and yeah, on to the demonstration. <laughs> 